This is Tom Bernanke and today I'm talking about the top seven ways to unclog your arteries. So yes, it is possible. Science does show that there's some amazing things you can do to basically reverse time and unclog your arteries, including great tips on eating and what other types of simple things you can be doing. But make sure to watch at the end because we're doing a countdown from the least important to the most important. And we're starting right now. A blood clot's a little bit different than atherosclerosis. A blood clot is when you actually form like a clump of platelet cells that plug the artery. If you have a red swollen calf or thigh, or if you have difficulty breathing, make sure you call your doctor immediately and get checked out. But if you wanna learn more about blood clots that can actually plug the blood vessel, I have some videos on that below. What we're talking about is plaque and arterial sclerosis. So arterial sclerosis is the actual narrowing of your artery. When your blood flows down to your toes and your fingers away from your heart, that's an artery. These are big, thick muscular vessels. They then go down to capillaries. Capillaries are small little vessels where oxygen gets deposited to your cells, nutrients get deposited to your cells, and then waste products get taken into the capillaries. So capillaries are very thin, very small, but then as they start to get together, veins develop and veins actually come back to your heart. Arterial sclerosis can happen away from your heart. Those thick muscular vessels can narrow. And how that happens is you can develop rough edges, you can get cholesterol, you can get inflammation, you can get bacteria, you can get some damage, some plaque. So bad conditions in your body essentially lead to that inflammation, scarring, fat development, plaque buildup. That's what arterial sclerosis. A blood clot can plug the veins. If a cut or some type of damage happens uh, and a blood clot actually shoots up, that's called a pulmonary embolism. And that's where a clot is dangerous. So clots happen in your veins, Arterial sclerosis happens on the way down to your feet. What can happen from arterial sclerosis? You can essentially develop a stroke. You can essentially get coronary artery disease. You can get chronic kidney disease. You can get peripheral arterial disease, which is cold hands, cold feet. So this is what we're trying to prevent. This is why these seven things are so important. And a plaque is made of cholesterol, fatty substances, calcium, fibrin, white blood cells. And another thing to remember is arteriosclerosis is related to low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. LDL and HDL are like shuttles that essentially carry cholesterol through your body. LDL is bad. That's a lot of buildup of bad cholesterol that can narrow your arteries. And HDL is good. You want HDL. Those are essentially shuttles that pick up loose cholesterol and take it out of your body. And I'll go over specifics later, but the HDL can actually pick up cholesterol from around the arteries and get bigger. And then that HDL molecule returns the cholesterol to the liver and takes it out of your arteries. So it is possible to reverse it to a degree. So the number one thing that you can do to improve your arterial sclerosis is seeing a doctor like me and vascular surgeons that we work with. In the office, we could do some finger testing to make sure that the blood flow is adequate. If it's not adequate, then we would put cuffs around your ankles and do something called an ankle brachial index. So depending on set values and using an arterial Doppler, we could see how stiff and blocked the vessels are. So this is a great screening tool that every podiatrist should be able to help you out with. And this is what these waveforms look like on the Doppler. In that case, you can order a CT angiogram with 3D mapping of your blood vessels. So you could see the blockages or at the same time at this point, they could be at the vascular surgeon essentially getting an angioplasty with runoff so they could diagnose it and treat it at the same time. For a bypass procedure or an angioplasty. So this seems like a good idea, but an angioplasty, that's essentially like a roto-rooter. Colleagues of mine called vascular surgeons make a small little poke in your thigh and or up in your body if it's other spots, but they go down with a wire. And on that tip of the wire is a balloon that expands 
and opens the artery. And then they can choose to place a stent. They use dye to see where it's narrowed and then they balloon it open and then place a stent. The danger is you can't just balloon everything open because it could rip the artery and then you're bleeding. That's called a hemorrhage. So you don't wanna do that. So what happens is the excellent vascular surgeons I work with, they essentially work their way down. I've gone to lots of surgeries with them and they essentially expand that artery and place a stent if it's closing back down again. Now, this is a pretty quick in and out surgery. Generally, they do this um, in less than like 24, 48 hours and you're out of that hospital uh, if they can't do that. So these things are amazing. They basically go into the artery, they're smooth, they can flex, they can bend. The problem is blood clots can build on top of these because they're not your natural blood vessel. But the problem is this is a foreign substance. It can last six months to like two years on average, but then clots start to develop and it can collapse and plug. If the vessel is completely blocked and this happens, where a full blockage develops, they actually have to cut that artery before and after and create a new vessel that goes around. That's called a bypass. That is a very serious and dangerous surgery, but has slightly better long-term outcomes. So frequently when I see people and they have purple toes or cold toes, uh, I send them right away to one of my colleagues uh, in vascular surgery, and they can do an angioplasty or a bypass and blood flow within a week or two is going perfectly down to the toes. Uh, the person can use their feet, their hands again, extremely well. And you can do this in other parts of the body as well. Number two is medications. So especially the statin medications, studies are generally pretty good on medications. So you should be seeing your heart doctor or your primary care doctor and getting evaluated. If you have cold fingers, cold toes, uh, if you have high cholesterol levels, you might need to be on medications like statins. Now there's other medications too, blood pressure medications, heart function medications. These are all things that may need to improve uh, your health. But don't worry, these top seven things are not just medication. Number three in our countdown is alcohol. So alcohol is related to inflammation. So studies show that men should not drink more than two to three drinks per day. So no more than three, I would say, and 15 per week. The studies also show that women should not drink more than two drinks per day on average, and no more than 10 drinks per week. And I love to go to parties and enjoy myself socially, but that's a lot of drinks. You can definitely cut that down, especially if you have cold hands, cold feet, if you're feeling fatigued, if you're feeling lazy, cut that alcohol down. It'll make a big, big difference. And health agencies do recommend cutting down on the alcohol. It can make a big difference in the inflammation in your arteries and help over time unclog your arteries. Quit smoking. I don't think that this is a secret. So smoking is related to inflammation, poor blood flow, and not only that, but the red blood cells in your blood vessels actually carry less oxygen. So if you can cut out smoking, your arterial flow, your oxygen delivery, your overall health, your whole body inflammation, people who don't smoke basically have higher high density lipoproteins, which is your HDL, and that's a lot healthier for you. Your cholesterol is down, your blood flow is a lot better. Is marijuana bad for cardiovascular and vascular health? Well, you'd think it would be bad, but the studies don't actually really prove it. That being said, the delivery methods definitely can cause vascular disease and are generally not healthy. Marijuana does have a lot of benefits, but they're not thought to be cardiovascular in nature. So there's a lot of downside, probably not a lot of upside. Number five is stress relief. Now this is a tricky one right here because uh, sometimes people can seem like they work a stressful job. Really what I'm talking about is emotional stress, family stress, if you need help, if you need to change your family life, you have to start doing that kind of stuff. I know this isn't an easy answer, but it's not just quit your job. It's really find time for yourself, find time to relax. That can mean a whole host of different things, but if you need help from community support, from family, reach out to those around you. Not only will it make a big difference in mental health, but also it will help unclog your arteries over time. Get that stress level down. Stress is related to inflammation and more inflammation means more LDL protein. That means more buildup, more plaque, more stress. The less stressed you are, 
the more HDL you have. Now the good part is HDL can actually reverse time and remove that plaque from your arteries. That's the crazy part. You can reverse time because that HDL will float through your bloodstream, actually scooping up cholesterol like a garbage truck. Moderate weight. So this isn't a big secret, but studies have shown that even decreasing your weight three to 5%, including your BMI, makes a huge, huge difference in lowering your LDL levels and increasing your HDL levels. So body weight is a huge marker. The more you can cut down your body weight, and we have a lot of great videos linked below on just how to do that. Number six, move more. So there was a study just this year in the British Journal of Medicine, which basically shows that over 20 years, when they looked at almost 100,000 people, people who did this single thing had a 20% less chance of death. And that single thing was weightlifting. Now, that doesn't mean you need to lift heavy weights like a bench press. This could mean any type of weightlifting, like sit-ups, push-ups, wall push-ups, picking up a book in front of you, uh, air squats, like going up and down can make a big difference. Simply starting a beginner workout program makes a huge difference. Now, this study gets even better because people who strength trained at least two days a week, if they combine that with cardiovascular exercise, which is like walking, bike riding, jogging, if they combined it with that, then it was 40% that seems almost too good to believe, but that's why this is number six, is make sure you get strength training two days a week and cardio at least two days a week. Now this isn't huge amounts. We're talking like five to 10 minutes or more. Like everybody's got an hour a week to basically cut down your mortality 40%. Are you too unhealthy to exercise? The answer is almost absolutely no. You can always exercise with the proper physical therapy help. And this is what this video goes over. There are solutions. We also review treatments for joint pain, nerve pain. So don't use that as an excuse. Get moving. It's one of the single best things you can do. This will help unclog your arteries. It'll help keep your blood flow better it will raise your HDL. So your HDL molecules will go through your blood system and collect that bad cholesterol and make you significantly healthier. And a bonus one is foods. Foods are huge. So here I'm gonna talk about five easy foods you can take to make yourself healthier. I list below my seven worst foods for inflammation, but what I'm gonna mention here is a quick overview. Eat more fruits and veggies. So there's flavonoids, there's antioxidants in there. There's a lot of nutrients and vitamins that will essentially cut down your plaque, your inflammation, and make your blood vessels healthier. I could talk about this all day, but more fruits, more veggies, that's the single best thing you can do to reverse your plaque. Fruits and vegetables raise your HDL, which cleans out your arteries, whereas sugar, oils, junk food, deposit all that cholesterol and clog your arteries. And it has to do with HDL and LDL. HDL cleans up that cholesterol and LDL drops it off and starts plugging your artery. So you could see eating all that good stuff raises your HDL, which dedicates its life to cleaning up cholesterol out of your arteries. Cut down that processed sugar and that garbage food like high fructose corn syrup and go with more fruits more veggies. Eliminate artificial trans fats. So this is the butters, the oils, you know, like the popcorn. So anything artificially made that has fat, that has oil, that is processed, it's going to have trans fats. Trans fats contribute to plaque and build up in your blood vessels. So the more you cut that food out, you will get healthier. Switch to those veggies, switch to those fruits. Omega-6 versus omega-3. So this is really important. I talk about this in a video down below, but essentially in our human body, our ratio of omega-6, which is kind of like bad fats versus omega-3s, which is kind of our good fats, should be one to one. In the Western diet in America, because we consume oils and artificial fats, our ratio is about 25 to one of omega-6, which is the bad one, to omega-3, which is the good one. 
omega-6 correlates more with inflammation, omega-3 correlates more with anti-inflammation. So cut down on those cooking oils. And again, I talk about that below quite a bit in my video. This is a list of good fats. This is by Dr. Kate Shanahan. So her website's Dr. Kate, but she does a pretty good breakdown. This is a board certified physician who analyzed this. You got some good ones right here. You got your bad ones. I looked at like 10 to 20 different charts all are by physicians or specialists or people certified to talk about this kind of stuff. And you know what? The lists kind of flip flop back and forth for different reasons. It's because there's good fats, there's bad fats, stuff burns in heat. There's a lot of different reasons why you should and should not eat these oils. So the best bet, in my opinion, is to avoid them altogether. They did a study in rats, and if rats were over 20 to 1 in omega-6 to omega-3, then those rats had increased inflammation markers like C-reactive protein, and they had much higher rates of cancer. These oils are not black and white because you have trans fats versus omega-6 fats. You have saturated fats versus unsaturated fats. You have fats that basically create toxic compounds when they're on the frying pan. So there's a lot of levels because some people love certain oils, even though they hate other oils. You want to make sure you're getting fresh fish and sources of omega-3 fatty acids. It can come from vegetables as well, but in lower concentrations. It's generally in salmon, freshwater fish. And what happens in this case is those omega-3s, I mentioned that 25 to 1 ratio, as close as you can get to one to one, that's what you want. And especially be careful with the supplements because sometimes the supplements are only like 10% omega-3 fatty acids. And you're, if you're getting 90% omega-6s and 10% uh, omega-3s, you're kind of wasting your money in my opinion. So I linked some good ones down below, but these aren't my supplements. So do your own research too. Those are just some of my favorites. Intake fiber. High fiber intake is associated with low cholesterol, and healthier arterial function. So the big thing is, it's easy to buy some scoops. So I link some below, but just get a scoop. Take a scoop every day. That's enough fiber. And do you have hemorrhoids or an itchy butt? Fiber scoops will help significantly with that. My friend is a bariatric surgery, and he puts 95% of his patients on this, and it makes a huge, almost instantaneous difference within a week or two. But make sure you're also taking your veggies and your fruits, because fiber's in there. Just doing those things will make a huge difference for you. We also go over the top vitamins, foods, and nutrients to take to improve your blood flow and circulation below. So make sure you catch those. And click below on our top seven anti-inflammatory foods. That will make a big, big difference in your diet and really reverse your blood flow, give you more energy and more health. If this helped, send it to somebody in your family or your friends that you know it can help with. And thanks for watching.